Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how to install MS-DOS 6.22. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do I want to install MS-DOS 6.22? And to be honest with you, I don't know why you would. I do it because I just like to. I grew up actually using MS-DOS and then I eventually got Windows 3.11 and then 95 and so on. So this is more of a nostalgic video for me, if anything. Um, I also want to prove that this thing can work fine as well on any version of Windows, um, XP, 7, 8, 10, whatever you want to virtualize on your host computer, this will work and you're able to use it. Now, you have other alternatives like DOSBox, but honestly, I use virtualization for everything, so I'm going to go with this. Um, this will work on any version of VMware Workstation and Player, all the way back to, we'll say, 6 or 7. Um, today, the newest version out is 15, but I'll be working on VMware Workstation 14. Okay. I will also be providing all links and all material used in this video in my description below. Um, I will be, once we're done with all this, I will be uploading the actual VM. So that if you want to just download the VM without even doing all the work that I'm about to do, that's perfectly fine as well. It's up to you how you want to do it. You may just be watching this video and say, huh, that's pretty, it's pretty interesting how to install, you know, MS-DOS, but I'll never use that. And then you just move on. And that's fine as well. So without kind of keep going on about this, let's just go ahead and get this thing started. So first things first, create a new virtual machine. All right, we're going to click on typical, hit next. Now, to do this install, I only have floppy image files because that's how DOS was produced. So, because there is no option here for floppy, it's only disk and ISO, we will have to click, I will install the operating system later. So, click next. All right, now from here, select the guest operating system. Now, for us, it'll be other. And then version will be DOS. As you can see, they list all different versions of other operating systems or bare bones systems. So we're going to be clicking on MS-DOS. Click Next. Now, name your virtual machine. I always like to name it what it is. So I'm installing MS-DOS 6.22, and that's the name of the virtual machine I'm going to give it. As well as you can see here, it goes and creates the folder as the exact same name, which I do like as well. So if I ever want to move anything or look at it later, I realize it's just not MS-DOS, and I don't know which version, if it's 3, if it's 5, 6, 7. You know, who knows? So after I name it, click next. I leave this as default except for store virtual disk as single file. Um, anything over 30 gigs, you want to split the virtual disk um, just because it makes it easier if any corruption happens or anything, you, you don't lose everything. But because this is so small, I don't want to have multiple, you know, files inside my, you know, directory for it. So I always create, you know, storage virtual disk. I usually don't split the disk until we get to like Windows XP. Um, definitely with Vista and above, it, it's split. But XP, um, it all depends. If I'm going to keep it in one file and like put it on a thumb drive, then I'll keep it as a single file. But if I'm going to put it on my computer, it usually stays as multiple. But enough getting off track here. So again, leave it as two. Storage virtual disk. Hit next. All right. And now you are ready to go. So we're going to click finish. And as you can see here, MS-DOS 622. All right, the device information and description here. So if you want to add anything down here, like, oops. All right. Now, this description always stays with it, so if I move this to another computer, that description comes as well. All right. Now, we're going to have to add a device. So we're going to go click on Edit Virtual Machine. Now, the device I have to add is a floppy drive. As you can see here, it has the memory, the processor, the hard drive, CD, which is not going to be really used, but we are going to CD support, so might as well keep that. It gives you a network adapter, even though... DOS doesn't do networking, but okay, we'll take, we'll hang on to it because it doesn't do any harm to it at all. But I'm going to have to actually add the floppy. So at the bottom here, we're going to click add. 
then we're going to click on floppy drive. All right, and this is going to add a floppy drive. Now, most people don't have a physical floppy drive added, so, you know, this is kind of a stupid setup here, but some people do. I actually do have it on my main computer, a floppy drive for USB, and it does come up here under physical drives. Um, don't ask why I have that. But for this purpose, we're going to use use floppy image file. All right, and now we're going to click browse, because now we have to pick the floppy file. Every time you open up, it's always going to go to, you know, your default virtual machine folder. So this right here is a folder we just created. Call this. Now you can keep all your stuff in here, but because I deal with so many different versions of it, I also do delete a lot of my virtual machines, especially if I'm only doing like, you know, tutorials like I'm doing today. I don't like to keep them in here. So I have my own ISO file here. And you can see here it comes with boot disk, DOS, nine, all the windows, pretty much anything I need. So for this purpose, it's going to be on my MS-DOS folder. Now, if you did download the link from my description below, you will get the MS-DOS 6.22 with CD-ROM. I also do have other ones here. Um, if you want, you can always message me and I can send you them. I will be doing a video later about DOS 7.1. But for again, for today, it's 6.22. So we're going to open this up, click Setup, which is disk one, and open. So now it went ahead and mounted this. We want to make sure that connected at power on is always on, and then hit OK. All right, now from here, let's go ahead and boot this uh, computer up. Down here, you can always hit the X. All right. So here's the basic setup screen. Setup program for 6.22, run your computer. So pretty much telling you to hit, hit enter. All right. Now with the newer versions of MS-DOS 622, you may get a couple of them that don't actually format for you, which is terrible. I happen to get a copy of it that does actually format. Otherwise, you have to exit the setup and then go into a drive, run a disk partition, format the whole disk, reboot, and then start this all over again. So this is actually very convenient. So we're going to go ahead and click enter for this for configure unallocated disk space. All right. This is telling you to keep the disk in the system and don't worry, we're not taking it out. So to continue, press enter. All right. Half a second later, reboots. Now it's formatting. It's asking if all this information is correct. Now you can go ahead and change what you need to change. But for me, demonstration purposes, everything's correct. All right. Now this is asking you where you want to install DOS. I leave it default. You can call it 622 if you want. 6.22. DOS 6, whatever your, you know, your floats your boat, but I don't like to do that. Leave it as default. All right, hit enter. All right, now it's asking you to insert disk 2. Now, to get add the actual DOS installation, you're going to hit Control and Alt together on the left side of your keyboard. That will release the mouse lock. Right. And now down here in your right hand corner, you're going to see the little floppy disk. All right. So we're going to double click it and it brings up your settings again. So we're going to go over here to browse and hit disk two. Okay. Give it a second. Now just click anywhere in the actual screen like I am and then hit enter. Now. We're going to do the exact same thing for disk number three. All right. Browse. Disk three. Hit OK. Wait about a couple seconds. Click on the screen one more time and then hit Enter. All right. So now we're going to not reboot it, but we're going to turn it off. 
So control alt will release the mouse again. Now up top here you see the little pause button and the down arrow. We're going to click the down arrow and we're going to hit shut down guest. Now the reason why I do this is because sometimes when you disconnect the floppy it freaks out when it cuts when it with floppies. So now from here we're going to go ahead and click connect on power on. Turn that off. Hit OK. And we're going to hit power on this virtual machine. As you can see, that's it. Check the directory. Very simple. All right, so now we want to add CD support. Now, that's just very simple as well. So we're going to hit Control Alt again to take us out. Down here at the bottom where the floppy was, we're going to double click that again. All right, hit Browse. Click on CD ROM and open. Now up top here, you want to make sure you hit connected and connected on power on. All right, hit OK. Now that went ahead and mounted the floppy drive. So again, click anywhere on the screen here. Now you're going to have to type in A colon backslash. All right. Now, for here, it's very simple. If you want to just see all the files in there, we're going to do what we did before with DIR, you know, which is short for directory, slash W. Now, what the slash W does, it gives you the wide look. Because if we just did DIR, it would list them up and down. Okay, but what we're going to do is DIR slash W, and that lists them straight across. Now, for this CD, it's not a big deal if you use DIR or, you know, backslash W. The issue is when you deal with the bigger files, like when you actually want to install Windows, you know, 3.11, where it just keeps going. You know, you can't you have 30 files here, and you really can't go up and down easily with it. So for this, we're going to run setup.bat, and that's it. Took only a half a second. The CD-ROM driver is now installed. You know, we have updated all the settings files and setup is complete. And with that, that's exactly how you install MS-DOS 6.22. Now from here, you can go ahead and mount games like, for instance, Doom. Um, I can go ahead and show you that real quickly. So again, I'm going to go back to my little floppy icon here. Go to Browse. I'm going to back out to my ISO folder where I have the DOS games. and my doom actually this is really good because my doom's in iso so we're going to go here to cd rom support use iso browse all right back to my iso folder dos games doom okay So, forgot, I got to reboot. So, I'm going to go up to here, restart the guest. See? And it even tells you right here that the driver is provided for the Oak Technologies. There is your CD ROM driver. And everything and then it tells you that it's drive D so we should be able to go to drive D and then again we're going to go ahead and check out the directory to see everything so we now have install .bat. now as you can see here which drive we're going to put on the C drive All right, we're going to call it Doom, because I don't know why they want to call it Dooms. Yes, 
this. And there you go. Now from here, you can go ahead and change all your information. Uh, the sound is not the greatest. So for anybody who actually really wanted to try this on here, um, I will do a video later on about how to run certain games, and how to fix the sound properties and everything else. But for the most part, this is just kind of showing you that I'm on a virtual machine running MS-DOS 6.22, and now I'm playing Doom. As you can hear, sounds and all. Let's see. But you can, like I said, you can run DOS games on here. And we're going to go ahead and get out of the game. And there you go. That is how you install MS-DOS 6.22 on VMware Workstation or VMware Player. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed my video, please stop back again as I'll be doing videos as much as possible. Uh, I will be showing videos how to make from Windows 1, 2, 3, XP, 2000, Vista, ME, so on and so forth, as well as Linux operating systems how to install Mac OS X on your VMware, as well as later on more advanced stuff like ESXi installations, networking, um, shared directories and folders between VMs and your host. So check back later and I hope everybody has a good day. See ya.